I've had many requests from students asking me to explain databases and I've actually developed a, a method that I think is fairly easy to go and determine the important information that we require in order to develop a database. Now before we do so, we need to realize that there's actually four steps that we do need to follow. First of all, you need to go and identify the entities. Now entities can be defined as elements, objects, things that we want to record information for. The second step is we need to identify the attributes. Now attributes are actually all the information or data that explains an entity. For example, if I have an entity called student, attributes could include student number, name, surname, initials, date of birth. The third step is to create the relationships. And then the fourth step is to resolve the relationship. So we're going to look at each one of these in more detail. We also need to know some additional terminology. What is the difference between cardinality and optionality? Cardinality relates to the type of relationship that you're going to have. It's going to be one to one, one to many, or many to many. Optionality relates to whether a record is going to be optional or whether a record would be required as part of that relationship. Then finally, there's a very important rule that we need to know, and this applies to determining when we have a foreign key. Now, the rule states that we're going to have a foreign key if we have a primary key that becomes a foreign key in a too-many site. So primary key of two one becomes a foreign key in too many. So imagine we have the following ERD diagram. We have our two entities. We've got our relationship in between the entities. We have two one on the one side and we have too many on the other side. So the rule actually now states the primary key of two one, which is that part, becomes the foreign key in the too many part. So the too many part in this case will receive a foreign key. So primary key of two one becomes a foreign key in too many. Or otherwise, if you can't remember that, just know that if we look at cardinality, it's the one to many relationship that has the actual foreign key. Now, how are we going to do this? My recommendation is let's look at the steps and let's try to identify them in the question that is asked. So whenever I encounter entity, I'm going to draw a block around it. Whenever I suspect or whenever I see something that's attributes I'm going to underline it and then if there's a relationship I'm just going to put, put a bracket around it. Now at this stage please take note that these things does not relate to our database schema and this is just my way of determining the important information. Now let's go and apply it by looking at the example here. We see that we've got two rules. We've got business rule one and we have business rule two. Now for each one of these, we're going to apply the four steps. So first of all, we're going to try to identify the two entities. Now typically, if we look at business rules, if it's given to you in a manner such as this, it, in most cases, it's going to mean that there's a minimum of two entities, but there might be one or two more. So if we read it, we need to try to identify the elements that we're going to record information from. So if we read the sentence, a course can only be presented if there are eight or more participants registered for it. So at this stage, something like course should indicate that that might be a possible entity. Now let's try to find some additional information. The next sentence actually states, course information includes course name, description duration and course notes. Now we know that those are attributes. So that now tells me that course is going to be an entity. If we continue with our sentences, participants can register for many courses and to be registered, you need to take at least one course. Participant information include ID name, name, surname, photo, and then gender, detail, gender and contact details. So now we know 
that participants is the next entity. If we read the sentences again, you will pick up that the first sentence there is an indication of your relationship, and then that sentence there is also an indication of a relationship. Now let's go and draw this. So what do we know? We know that we have two entities. We've got course and we've got participant. We know that there's a relationship in between. So go and write down course and I'm not going to write the full thing here. So please ensure that you write it in singular format. So write out the full name of the entity. So we've got course and we've got participant. If we read the sentence, now you will note that we've got our two entities, so let's call this entity 1 and entity 2. The sentence actually goes from entity 1 to entity 2, so it goes in that direction. So we are actually now going to answer that part of our cardinality optionality section. Now let's look at that. A course can only be presented if there are eight or more participants. So a course should have how many participants? Eight or more, meaning many participants. It should have or can only be presented if there are eight or more. So it means that we need to have participants in order to present a course. So that first part is now answered. Let's look at the second sentence. We're now going to start off with participants and we're going to end up with course. So in this case, we start here, we end up here, so therefore we're answering that section. Now let's look at it. Participants can register for many courses. So a participant can take many courses. Can, at this stage, means it's optional so for now it seems to be that okay participant can it's optional take many courses if we continue with the sentence we see and to be registered on the company database you need to take at least one course so now we find that a participant should actually take a course so now we know it's required now guys when this happened Please don't give something like the following. At this stage, we're not going to accept that as right. We're going to assume that you don't understand what should be done. So rather do it very lightly. And then once you're sure, you go and you create the correct symbol. Now let's look at the second rule. Various topics are presented and are linked to various courses. Now at this stage, we for sure know that course is an entity. We suspect that topic might also be an entity, but we need to find proof for that. So if we continue reading, if new topics are registered, it might be that they are not yet associated with any course. So at this stage, that first sentence, as well as the second sentence, seems to be part of a relationship. Then we continue and we see that topic information now includes topic code, name, description, and outcome. So those are our attributes. And then the last sentence again relates to our relationship. So to confirm, topic will now definitely be an entity. So we need to go and draw topic. So we know that topic is an entity. There is a relationship between course and topic. And you write out the full name. Let's look at this, the relationships. So we're going to start off with topic, which is number one. We're going to end up with courses. So we're going to start off with topic. We're going to end up with courses. So we're going to complete that section there. So topics are presented and are linked to various courses. So topic can be found in many courses. If new topics are registered, it might be that they are not yet associated with any course. So at this stage, it means that a topic might not be registered to a course, so it can be optional. 
if we look at the next sentence we're going to start off with course and we're going to move over to topic so we're going to answer that part of our cardinality optionality in order for a course to be presented one or more topics should be registered for that course so a course should have one or more topics meaning many topics should have indicates that it's required so there's our ERD diagram now this is just part of your rough work if we start looking at the questions we can now see construct the ERD diagram for rule number two which is topics and courses so you would actually go and draw only that there okay ignoring that portion there so that will be your answer for 2.1 then they ask us for 2.2 indicate whether any foreign key is present for the entities in 2.1 so the entities is course and topic what do we know about foreign keys we have a rule the primary key of 2.1 becomes a foreign key in too many what do we see We've got many too many and we've got many too many. So at this stage, there's no foreign key for each one of these two um, entities. Okay, when you do this, don't give an X, just go and say no foreign key. In this case, the handwriting's a bit bad. For number three, they tell us, go and create a database schema entry for the participant entity. Now, whenever we talk about database schema, we need to know the following. You will have an entity name, curly bracket, primary key, hash, attributes, attributes, and then if there's a foreign key, you're going to write it down and you're going to underline that foreign key. Okay, now for some reason I can't underline it, but just imagine that there will be a line underneath your foreign key. Okay, there we go. So the foreign key will be underlined. So that's your basic structure. Now, if we go and look at the database schema entry for rule number one for participant, guys, and please ensure that you read your questions thoroughly, we're going to end up with the following. Okay. We're going to have participant, curly bracket. The primary key for participant is ID number, hash, to indicate it's a primary key. Then we're going to write name, I'm sorry I'm running out of space, surname, write out the full names here. And then we're going to end up with contact details. Now, if we look at participant, we need to try to determine whether there's going to be a foreign key. So if we look at the rule, the primary key of to one becomes a foreign key to many. So for participant, in this case, it's many to many. So there's no foreign key. So we can just go and end it. What I have seen is that many people actually go and they assume that the last attribute is always the foreign key. Now that is actually nonsense. The only time that we find a foreign key is if we have the one-to-many relationship. Okay, so if there's no one-to-many relationship, there's no foreign key. It might even happen that an uh, entity might have more than one foreign key. For example, if we had the following, we had a, another table and it was also one too many then it would have meant that this particular one would have had two foreign keys so that can also go and happen so the primary key of two one becomes foreign key there so that's the first one primary key of two one becomes a foreign key to many so that's your next foreign key so those situations can also exist so my recommendation is 
try to look at some other database examples. There's a few that's been uploaded on Ecumba. Go and download the slides, um, try out the doctor example and then also the Olympics example. And then if you run into problems, please consult with your lecturers so that we can help you with this.